Hello, hello. How is everybody? Um, let me know how things are. Like, how does it sound? Um, the lighting is weird uh, because I have like literally two stick lights. I don't have a lot of other light. The sunlight is not happening today. We're in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I'm just highly experimental stream today and yeah that's that's all I got highly experimental stream and it doesn't look like the chat overlay is working properly so that's exciting that's weird it worked fine when I was setting things up that could just be screen elements sometimes they're like that so I'm opening some paints. I picked these up at, um, um, I want to say it's a thrift store, but it's not really a thrift store. It's like a art repurposing thing. So if you have like old paints and stuff like that, um, you can take it to this place, uh, Tinkertopia in downtown Tacoma, and they will basically resell it. Um, so I've got, I like these, the older ones, because they, they're, they're thick. Oh. See, they're, they're thick. My hands are goopy now. But so, all right, so um, I'm setting up my palette right now um, and we're gonna do some, some testing first because that's the smart thing to do. Um, this is called Gold Ochre from Shinhan Paint. Um, I've already put on some titanium white from Blick, oil color series one. Um, we're gonna be painting, I'm probably doing this wrong. Well, maybe not wrong, but like not the way that other people would do it. I'm going to start on the places where there's the highlights, like where the light is shining and everything else will be black. So we're gonna pull the image out of the black. Um, I can always put more black down because I do have black. Um, I also have some nice gray. I have some cool gray, so that will be really help to separate things. But um, we'll start with the highlights, pull the highlights out of the blackness, and if we need to, we will put black over things. But I don't know how far we're going to get today because, again, this is going to be a lot of experimenting. And I kind of want to get the right dry color because this mummy skull thing has been in this cave or crypt or whatever for like years and years and years and in my brain I envision it happening in the desert so it should be dry and I probably got my head cut off but that's just what we're working with today um, this color I just put on my palette is yellow ochre from Gamblin and then I've got this raw umber um, Umbers are interesting. Um, usually when you mix them with white, they go this weird warm gray color. So I don't know if, if it's gonna be what I need, but I'm gonna check it out, test it out. It's very dark. Ugh, it's stuck to my hand. Uh, the other colors I have, I have um, Mars Orange, I have Wine Red and Carmine. I figured the Wine Red and the Carmine would be cool for the gems in his eyes. Um, and then I have Sap Green and Permanent Green Pale to do some of the snake with and possibly put on the frame because I have a frame for this and it's got this really cool texture on the side that kind of vaguely looks like snake scales but I figure if I put some like green over top of it it'd be really cool so this is what I got um, titanium white this was the gold ochre the yellow ochre and the raw umber and where's my palette knife palette knife. I have a stool over here. It has my phone on it and stuff. 
Right. Start off your stream, get a spam message. Give me a second to take care of this. You guys can look at my shoulder for a minute. All right, hold on. Got to copy this. Copy. We're not replying. Report. Spam, scams, or bots. Next. I'm going to report it for spam. Paste. Submit report. Block this user. Woohoo! Kind of wish it was a little easier to do that. If you don't want to listen or see the spam bots nearly as frequently, they do still happen. You can go over to YouTube. Gosh, pardon me. I've had an upset stomach all day, so if I'm a little burpy, I apologize. I like this big chunk of acrylic paint down here. All right, so I want to take a little bit and see what colors they turn into when you mix them. You guys might not really be able to see. So a little, probably even less than that. I just want to see which one is like dusty-ish. And the nice thing about oil paints is they don't change color as they dry. So like what I see here is what's going to be on there even after it, everything oxidizes and it's been sealed and everything. So this is very soft looking. probably end up using the raw umber anyways because it makes a really good shading color. Mix that with a little bit of blue and it like gets this really cool darkness to it. All right. Let's try the yellow. That was a lot more yellow than I put in that one. It's definitely more red. I don't know, I'm liking the, go the yellow ochre more. Okay, that color looks nicer on my towel than it does on here, and let's do the umber. <coughs> I'm not even standing on my little standing pad over here. My back is going to hurt later if I don't. Mixy mix, blendy blend. So it's turning into this weird like brownie gray color. Like I said, the umbers are good for like shading and stuff, especially the raw ones, because they do this weird thing where they turn gray. All right, so see if this shows up. So this, this is the gold umber, this one up here. This is the yellow ochre, and this is the raw umber. Sorry, gold ochre, yellow ochre, raw umber mixed with white. And I'm kind of liking the yellow better, except on the towel, which is white, the red looks, I don't know, it looks better in a way. I also don't like how it gets thinner, like um, how the colors desaturate as you add white to it. Like this was some kind of like weird pale brown. This might be a good skin tone. Like if you're doing a human, like drawing a human being, 
This would be a good skin tone base and add a little like red and stuff in there if you need to, depending on the ethnicity you're doing. But I think I'm going to do the yellow ochre and then for the shades and stuff like that we'll do the umber. I just don't know, well we're going to start at the lightest, which basically means I need to do a thin layer of the brown on it, which means we're going to move that just up there. We might have a, we might have a need for it. Try not to waste stuff. I meant to squirt out a slightly, slightly smaller job, but that didn't happen. All right, we're going to move the umber also. Amber is so dry, it's amazing. Okay. All right, my buckets of paint brushes. I think I'm gonna do this one. Um, I got these at like Michael's, super cheap. Um, and then I have the mineral spirits in this glass jar. You need a jar that you can reseal fairly quickly. Um, and I got this probably at Michael's, possibly at Blick. It was on sale, that's all I know. And the mineral spirits do not smell nearly as bad, or what I got is like the odorless mineral spirits. And yeah, they still smell, uh, but they smell less. And I probably need to clean this out because there is a lot of sediment down there. Technically, officially and technically, this is my first oil painting. I have some that I was goofing around with that I just don't like how I was doing it. So, that, oh. smelly, might have to open the window. Um, the other thing is at 4 p.m., so in about 45 minutes, I will have to take a break because I have to go give the cats their treats or they will come down and maul me and that would not be fun to watch. You guys actually wouldn't be able to see anything because it'll be on the floor. You don't get to see the floor. <clears throat> Pardon me, gosh. All right. Um, I want some mineral spirits on my brush. And I always thought like the mineral spirits was just to clean, but because it breaks down the oil in the paint, it actually makes your paint dry faster. So like here's a highlight area, all down here's a highlight area. In here. So I figured this is like realistically how high this is up on a wall. And if you're an adventurer carrying a torch, like what would you see? So I'm thinking, I don't know if I want the torch to be right in front because that will be super easy and I wouldn't have to worry about any complicated shadows. Or do I want it to be off to the side a little bit? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to get there um, very soon because this, this is happening. This, this is totally happening. And I don't have a cable long enough for my face cam because it would have to be like right here and that's it's miles away from the computer that is doing the broadcasting work I'm trying to just take little little tiny bits of paint right now because again I am I am unsure of what I'm doing and I am not going in full hog Like right here, it's probably as dark or as bright as that needs to be. Here needs to be brighter. Need some more mineral spirits. Just keep thinning this out. That looks so much wider. I mean, it's not, but it looks like it. Okay, we're gonna make it wider. Ah. 
have fun drawing and painting cheekbones, okay? Like this little bit that's right here, I just have fun doing that. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger on my paintings. Okay. This is gonna come up a little bit. This. What the hell am I listening to now? So this here is wider than it is here. Maybe this gem is just a little bigger, which is probably entirely possible. See, yeah, like it's 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 right. It's just it doesn't look right for some reason. But that's okay. Spirits are running away off my palette. All right, this this is the hole where your spine connects to your body, so I don't even need to paint that. Um, <clears throat> it's probably going to be a little bit of a highlight down here. And maybe on the edge, and there's actually like a little spur kind of thing there. And then this, and then up like that. I drew these lines with some oil pastels so that way when I finally painted over things it would start blending in. So I don't really have to worry too much. I shouldn't need to worry too much anyways. About how it lays. So I can just smoosh things around and get things in there. Alright, now I'm going to start, actually I don't even need to do that yet, hang on. Mineral spirits, untwist the jar. Okay, put some right there. If you're an oil painter, um, please, like, Send me resources. I've spent a long time meandering around YouTube seeing if I could, you know, make sense of some of the tutorials out there and the answer was no, not really.
I think put the light source on the left side, the side that I'm standing on. Um, I think that'll cause some cool glints here and it'll catch um, like this part of the snake and this bit of the snake. So there'll be some cool shadows casting that way. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. Which means, gonna be more highlights on this side. But I also gotta remember that this is there and it will also cast a shadow, so we might have like a really harsh shadow right down this section here. <laughs> fun just smushing paint around. It vaguely reminds me of doing like watercolors. So because the nose is going to cast a bit of shadow, we're going to start this highlight a little bit out this way. And then the gem is popping out a bit, so there's going to be a shadow here, so we probably don't need to lighten that a whole lot. And this is where we're going to start probably incorporating some of the burnt umber to make some cool shadows that are still brown but not like this bright. So I'm mixing the two together with my brush, which is probably not the smart thing to do, but you never know. That's, that's how I understand painting, so. Oh yeah, see? Got some nice shadows happening. God, this paint is so thick. Thick boy paint. Which means it's going to take forever to dry. like something. That's all I can ask, right? That it looks like something. And then we can always go darker. I don't want to go darker yet, but we can always go darker. I probably should try to put my laptop over there. Then I could stare that way and see the comments without having to look back, but that's not what happened this time, so. don't necessarily think we will see that this stuff here that's the bit that's like under your your cheekbones and stuff because I think it'll be dark enough so I think this is gonna fade into the black Shadows here. Okay. So here is where we need clean the brush. I 
really cleaning the brush and we're just kind of putting some of the mineral spirits into the bristles. This needs to be like this. I'm trying to push very, very lightly to create some kind of blend thing happening here. more darkness or medium darkness Black, black. The shadows are going that way. There might actually be some brown over here. The teeth are going to be their home thing. I just have to not make the skull go up too high or it'll change the perspective. We don't want that. We want it to stay looking like it's being tilted up a wee bit. the inside of the nose. So this, this side you're going to be able to see. Inside the nose. Gosh, pardon me, wow. Alright, so the light coming from over here a little ways, I don't necessarily think that this would cause any problems. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. trying to decide if I want to do like a super textured something or a smoother something and I'm kind of liking the textures because it kind of makes the skull feel like super old and pitted and stuff so we might we might just go with it then I can add like dent there maybe there's a dent here
mean, it still looks like something. Did I freeze? It looks like I froze. Oh, I'm caught. If I caught up, I think I've caught up. That's that's exciting. Guess we should do the teeth. They are definitely a thing. I'm gonna do the teeth with white and I'll probably put some brown over it. And we of course we're doing vampire month, so we have a vampire. Mm -hmm. Those mostly right. I think they're mostly right. So I'm not using white white. I've got like a little tiny bit of brown mixed in here of the yellow ochre and it's making this really like soft color. Alright, so this tooth is just gonna be highlighted here, and this one will probably only be highlighted there. Spirit's trying to run away with me. This one will probably be the same. This guy does not have all his teeth. In fact, there's probably some like way back there that we don't really get to see. We'll put, we'll put another one right here too. Um, you can see like up his roots, like. We might want to bring that down on these, which I think I'll have to wait for it to oxidize a little bit. This is not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I have to say, I thought this was going to be like a struggle and a half. And so far, I feel like I'm going to do an okay. step back which means I have to like walk around awkwardly definitely too light but I can always do a couple like wash overlays and make it darker I think having it too extreme right now is probably a good thing because you can always go through and blend it softer always add the darkness. It's much easier to add dark than add light. The dark colors just like suck all the vibrance and stuff out of the lights. Definitely, I don't, I don't think we want to go any higher.
make this one come down to like the normal gum line. Which means there will be some darkness right here. Let's get the white off the brush. <clears throat> There will still be a stream tomorrow. We're going to work on the digital vampires. Um, I keep going, I'm gonna order the stuff. I'm gonna order this stuff and I haven't ordered this stuff yet. Um, I just kinda wanna wanna do one giant order, but that might not be feasible. Like that might not be reasonable. I don't have a market for a while, but at the same time it's like, if I wait too long, all right, this is also gonna come down. I think it needs to come down, down, even further. Right there. I like the brightness on either side. You know what? We're gonna bring this cavity. So this is the only one that's got like fully exposed. Unless we want to bring one of these up. I don't know. I'm kind of okay with those the way they are. Alright, let's. Let's get some darker going here. Alright, like, like it should almost be bisected right there. Almost. gonna do real quick is this usually spills over like that a wee bit. Kind of go something like that. And then you've got your eyebrow bone right there, which catches there. And then that's going to basically be all in shadow, I think. Start to blend things out of it, getting the shades right or where they're supposed to be. Not quite so extreme. I probably need a different brush for that. Probably. I kind of want to start on the hands. I feel like we got the skull pretty good. <clears throat> Do this lighter, the one that I already mixed with the titanium white. So this is the wrist area. 
And then I'm going to have like a tie there, which we can paint after. Maybe that's not quite the wrist. Like if you look at your hand, if it's bent that way, like your wrist is here and the palm of your hand is up here a little bit. So if you put it under your chin, you're gonna see the side palm thing a little bit above the wrist. I don't know, I got space, we're fine. Cause that'll be in front of here. So that's gonna be like that. Okay, never mind. Never mind. surprised like so little of this paint is going such a long way like if this was acrylic I'd be done with the paint that I've got on my plate already that was not something I was expecting all right so this is the palm palm bone needs to be like here don't worry about that We'll, we'll figure it out properly. I'm gonna do this. There's that. And a little tiny, little tiny bone caps. And then this is the first, first joint between your knuckle and, or between the palm of your hand and your first knuckle. And I've got this. And your finger bones are shaped a little weird. I don't know if you've ever actually like looked at a, a skeleton, skeletal hand thing, but finger bones are a little interesting just how your your muscles and tendons and stuff attach to them there's right one two three four okay yeah the fourth one's like way up here so and just kind of Sketch these ones in a little bit like that. They slightly curve, but not this. This knuckle shouldn't. Oh my gosh, that one's like way too long. We need to come down to here. Because this one's, it's okay. You okay? It'll be okay. All right. So this one's going to go behind the cheekbone. So we're not going to see all of it. This one really starts curving a little bit. So we're going to get something like that. There should be a gap there. Something like that. And then your top finger is really cool. It's like a little bone on the end that sticks basically straight up and down.
all this will be much darker. So I'm not super worried that it's not quite right yet, but it should be handy. All right. And I feel really bad because I cannot remember all the names of the bones. Oh, pardon me. Wow. are kind of pointy. I get to stand on this side for a while. Oh my goodness. My viewpoint has changed so much. It actually does. Wow. I'm not hating it right now which is a pretty good thing when you're doing something new. It, my, my thing is, is how easy is it gonna be to make corrections because I know that like I've probably messed stuff up. Okay, but the light's coming from this side, so this is gonna be a little bit more like that. There will, be, there will need to be some shadows right here. It's probably going to come like that for the snake, but we're not gonna, not gonna worry about that right now. I do need more. I need more thinner. The paint needs to be thinner. If it's thinner dries faster even though it doesn't necessarily dry like that but the thought is there oh I just got like a cramp right here I think my body is angry that we did sit-ups yesterday like we don't do sit-ups at least twice a week Maybe it's because the machine I usually use to do like the crunches and stuff, because my core is flabby, um, wasn't available. So we had to uh, use one of the little assisted bench things. Maybe we should do the stone, the red. That could be nice. I kind of want to do that with the palette knife though. Because I think that'll give a really good texture. Time for the yellow ochre. Alright, so this is going to be in shadow. So, like here is going to be darker. And this. This one's going to be just a weird shape. That's okay. Weird shapes are fine.
all the focus. I need some more uh, thinning agent. Hey, Cherry. What is this thing? This thing is a huge painting. It's done in oil paint. I've been doing it for less than an hour. And in a few minutes, I do have to take a break, though. Where is Pincard? Pincard is actually right back here. Ta-da! Here he is. He's okay. Now he's going back. Because it's a safe place for him. Are you appeased? <laughs> oh, pardon me. I will finish pin card this year because I applied for summer con and it's like a, it's a bit of a nerdier thing. So I think pin card would be the perfect thing to have there. So I will be finishing him. You're stunned. Why are you stunned? I said he was safe and yet he was on a shelf. I did think he was in a box though, to be fair. Why won't you sell? I'll, I can sell you pin card. If you like him when he's done, I will sell him to you. My goal, though, is if you choose not to purchase him, to have him for summer con because it's a nerdy thing. So he'll be done by June, or at least in the beginning of June. Uh, probably will not be streaming painting him. Um, he's probably going to be one of those projects I do at my desk while I'm waiting for things. A million. He's not going to be a million dollars. He'll probably be like 150 or 200 bucks. I haven't, I haven't figured it out yet. Cause I, I did not put nearly as much effort into him as I did to the other skeleton, to skeleton. Um, and I got like 900 for him, which blows my mind that somebody wanted to spend $900 on something I created. Okay, I have to get over here. You've been crying about Picard for like three years? It's only been like two years. Maybe three. Yeah, yeah, 900 bucks for Skeleton. But it was like 80 hours of time into him. I. I had him priced at 1200 but um, the person that bought him is like, they buy something from me every year, and they really, really, really liked it. Like, they came by every day of Comic-Con last year, and were like, ugh, like, humming and hawing and stuff like that. They, those people alone, the people that bought Skeleton last year, they spent so much money on me last year. Like, they bought so much of my stuff. It was ridiculous. Like, I will totally give them a discount on anything if if they can't, you know, if they just can't justify, justify it. They'll <laughs> sell it to them. Uh, again, pin card, because I didn't spend like 80 hours on him, he's not going to be nearly as much. Um, I think I spent $20 for the pin, um, and then like $10, $15 on paint, and god, four, five, six, 
I want to say it's probably eight hours painting him. So whatever that is going to math out to is it will be what I charge. Definitely not going to be like my hundred bucks though. I do I do like skeleton, or I do like. Uh, I just again it depends on the amount of art or effort and time. Eight times a hundred. <laughs> No, no, I usually charge, oh, it depends on what, it depends on how much effort I had to put in. Like, pin card is not super complicated. The face is what's complicated on him. And so I, I'm probably, again, it's probably going to be like maybe $20 an hour for eight hours, plus the $30 in supplies. Okay, I'm going to try something on this. I'm going to use my little chisel shape. Ooh, you know what I should do? We're going to leave that there. I've got this big chonker. A thousand bucks. I'm going to soften the bristles because I haven't used these guys in ages. So I'm going to use this um, gold ochre for the rocks. The brush is super stiff. Ooh. Is that how they get the runny? I think I accidentally discovered something. You're dying to see me tomorrow. Yeah, don't die. Hey, Mr. Fox guy, how are you? Yes, thank you, Cherry Round. I do not have access. Well, I take that back. I do. But so the streaming computer is like way over there, like on the other side of the room. Um, and then I have my laptop up here so I can see chat. I downloaded Steam Deck and got everything to sync correctly so I can like push buttons and stuff. And the one camera. I have portable lights set up because there is no light in this corner. This corner is usually really dark. So this, this is again an experimental thing. I have I have like the sound foam back here to help with whatever echo there might be. I don't know. I got no I got the Stream Deck Mobile. Hold on, let me unplug my phone from its chargey thing. So, yeah, I just, I got Stream Deck on my phone. So I got the Stream Deck mobile so I could hit buttons. I paid for the subscription for like a year because I was like, it's 25 bucks, I might as well do it. This is going to be a regular thing. Yes, Stream Deck mobile. Yeah, it's, it's what I could think of. And I knew... Based on research, I researched stuff. Um, it was compatible with the streaming software that I use because I don't use like OBS anymore. I have I have some other software that was way more expensive. Um, but uh, it, it's more effective for what David and I do, mostly David. What's tomorrow? Oh. You have the OG, OG Stream Deck and it's been a lifesaver for years? Yeah. Um, David got one. He got like the little six button one last year, like for Christmas. Attack of the Robots. Oh, Mr. Fox Guy. The other night, David and I watched, Hubby and I watched, um, the New Barbarians, aka Warriors of the Wasteland. It was so hard not to tell him what was going to happen. I just had to sit here and go, oh my god, the costumes are amazing. So thank you for sharing a really bad movie. 
before my husband could tr could um, torture me with it. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was actually pretty good. It's just the dialogue was terrible. The dialogue was so bad. <laughs> he wants to watch some of the other movies from that studio because apparently they're as equally as bad. O positive, not O negative, like the band. Well, Mr. Fox guy, if you ever need some blood, I am totally there for you. I am also an O type. Totally cereal. <laughs> All right, after I paint this next couple of squares, I have to go downstairs and give the kitties their treats. Because that's what happens at four o'clock. But I don't want all this lovely mineral spirits to evaporate on me. progress. I'm pretty happy. All right. I am going to take a quick break. I have to again run upstairs and give the kitties their treats. I'm going to hit my button and hope that it works. So break screen and
All right, I am back. I need to move this. It's in the way. Ah, come on. Ah, this magnet is butch. The grew out of mine when you hit your thirties. Ah, uh, you guys are funny. Um, I need more of this. Oh, and I almost forgot. So. A long time ago, I purchased this book, and when I went up last week to find vampire books that I thought were interesting to share with everybody, I totally discovered it wedged in between some other books. And so I've been kind of reading through it, and whoever wrote the Wikipedia entry, or this one other resource that I'm using, I think use this book as their primary source material. It's hilarious. Vampires, restless creatures of the night. It's got all kinds of pictures and stuff inside. And it just literally just talks about vampires. And it's like a pocketbook. And the piece of paper I was using to, oh no, there it is. Do you guys use receipts to keep track of where you are in your books? The road wireless go to often. Um, anyways, there, there's a section in this book and I also found a section. It's okay. The light fell, it's totally fine. Get out of my way. I'll just stick this back up there. Stay, stay, I need the light. <laughs> Vampires are restless because of the liquids they drink. Uh, Cherry, the answer to that depends on where your vampire originated from and what kind of vampire they are. Because some vampires don't care about sunlight, and some do. It's absolutely bananas the amount of variety. Even historically, like even historically, there are so many different kinds of vampires. It's flippin' ridiculous. But, um, believe it or not, werewolves are older than vampires. There are older werewolf myths and stories and encounters and all that jazz than there are vampire myths and encounters and all that jazz. Like, vampire stuff didn't start happening around until, like, um, one of the big plagues, like the, the world-altering plagues. Um, but va um, werewolves go back even further. Sparkly vampires get snuffed. Yes, they totally do. Those aren't vampires. Those are freaking fairies. Which, I have to say, the Irish and the Scottish have a type of vampire that is basically a fairy. Um, it's kind of like a succubus almost kind of thing going on. And, um, yeah. They're not nice. But yeah, so um, yeah, werewolves predate vampires, which is crazy. And I, pair, I paid five dollars for this book, apparently. Um, it's kind of cool because it names a bunch of vampires, like people that were accused of being vampires. Like there's this one dude during the French Revolution that they thought he was a vampire. Where did he go? Okay, here. One of the biblical prophecies that generated the most imaginative sparks is that of the Last Judgment. To be accompanied by the resurrection of the dead, a sinner's entry to hell is gained by way of a dizzying fall guided by a demon. So, the end of the world will have vampires. Isn't that exciting? 
Um, the USA has vampires too, you know, the Republicans. <laughs> Oh my god, don't even get rep- No, I thought though they were like reptilian aliens. Do I have the wrong side of the political debate? I don't know. But, um, that wasn't it. Where's the French dude? Here he is. Uh, Giles de Rey, whose seal is shown above, or whatever. It was the most atrocious torturer of children in history, according to Roger Villeneuve in his 19, 1955 biography, Giles de Rey. Rey commanded the singing of a child, child's choir to accompany the death rattles of the children he was killing. So he's like um, Elizabeth Bathory up to like a hundred. Who's not in there? I missed something. That's okay. Oh yeah, um... Uh, Giles DeRay was in Joan of Arc's time, so that's if that helps you with like a timeline or anything like that. I think the reptilians are the lobbyists in Congress. I don't know, I, it could be. I don't know. All I know is that um, there is a type of vampire that is supposedly reptilian, and we talked about that last week, and I'm wondering if maybe the like conspiracy theorists and stuff like that think that they're aliens when they're really just evolved reptiles kind of you know the alternative evolutionary line from uh the next generation where picard met that race of dinosaurs that that could talk because they were mostly human death rattle equals death metal band name there is probably already a band named that, and there's probably more than one. I'd hate to say that, though, but I probably is. There probably is. What else do we got here? I haven't read all of it. I've literally made it about a quarter of the way through the book. This book is dense. It talks about how... Um, where is... Oh, it's the Bloodstained Countess. Did you guys see... Was it on HBO? There was... It might have been a Netflix special or special thing, but they had, like, that, um... The Elizabeth Bathory, like, biography movie that definitely painted her crazy because she was still crazy but like not a vampire crazy uh let's see so there's a picture of a painting in here that shows elizabeth bath reviewing the torture of young girls her victims are beaten unremittedly pierced with needles bound tightly that the ropes broke their skin and then rolled naked in the snow like that does not sound like a good time sounds like a terrible time <laughs> not not that one there was a one there was one where there was like dinosaurs like actual dinosaurs and they figured it out by searching up in their you know databanks what was like would have been the smartest dinosaur before they the world ended you know before the meteor hit and destroyed everything was I think I feel like that was a next generation episode I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was. By the way, how do you... I don't know, I can't read fast enough. <laughs> I can't read it.
I don't even know. Yes, you do need to watch them. They are awesome. That's my favorite Star Trek. Oh, you know, it could have been, it could have been a Voyager episode. I don't think so. It feels like it was a uh, Next Generation episode. You need to watch the entire thing. Timba in his eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good episode, man. That was so good. I liked that episode. But if you like vampires, see if you can find this book. It's Vampires, Restless Creatures of the Night, Nice Night by Jean Margini. I think that's who it's by. Hold on, I gotta see if I can find the copyright page. Oh, Harry and Abrams. Oh, no, Harry and Abrams is the publisher. Yeah, Jean Margini. There are like one, two, three, four. There's five pages of pictures before you get to like the table of contents. Oh, they've got references. They have pages of references. Dang, this is like a little mini textbook. If this book wasn't so dense and I found it easier to find the research online, I would probably be reading it just, just reading it like basically verbatim on stream. You need to install your blue prayer. <laughs> I only own a handful. David definitely wants to pick up some more Blu-rays. Yeah, not owning things is freaking crazy, right? And owning actually owning something and being able to watch it whenever you want. It's so nice. Um, the gym, when I go in the afternoon, the gym um, plays older TV shows. And so right now they're playing Nash Bridges. And I was like, oh, I enjoyed that show. It was silly. So now I'm watching in my free time, or while I'm working on other things, Nash Bridges. And I would like to get one of it, well, a couple of the other ones that I remember watching when I was younger. Um, one of them was called Forever Night. It was about a vampire cop. I thought it was hilarious. You own zero Blu-rays? I don't know, I think you should just own physical copies of things that you really appreciate. Uh, especially with how um, companies are doing the subscription services for like everything. You, you may, you know, buy a copy of a movie off of Amazon, like a digital copy off of Amazon, and they may randomly decide that, uh, you know, it's not yours anymore and there's not anything really you can do about it. Oh my god, you have so many movies. Which is not surprising. That does not surprise me at all. What I learned, Chris Christopherson is the guy who would have been Jack Torrance in The Shining. I don't have an opinion on that. I'm sure many other people do, though. I don't 
my ruler. Drawing this was probably the most mathematical thing I have done in a long time. Okay, I have to do this side. I'm going to move this over here so I can use it. Oh, I can almost see the tech from it. This guy that was the meteor mentor. Oh, yeah. That would have been a good role for him. Yeah. You know, I, I can agree with that. Anyways, what I'm <laughs> part of my 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 Nash Bridges story was uh, I'm watching it on Daily Motion because no other well Amazon says they have it but it's you know not available in your country and every time I switch my VPN to a different country Amazon's like that's not you you don't live there you're not streaming from that country I'm like f you. But I don't, I don't need to watch it enough to where, like, I need to go and buy a copy. That would be silly. Um, Rockford Files is good. I've seen that. I don't think I've seen all of it. I think I saw most of it. There's some old BBC ones that I want to watch that I remember vaguely, like, vaguely remember from my childhood. Um... And they're not Ooh. I'm trying to think. Um, I've watched Are You Being Served? I've seen their movies. I actually think we have that on DVD. Um, and Faulty Towers, which you can think, I think you can watch Faulty Towers on Netflix. But it's available for streaming because John Cleese is freaking amazing, right? Um, well, there's just a bunch of like random ones that I can't really remember the titles for because I was so young, but I do remember that they were cool. He could have been replacement for the guy in the Big. Le you are not wrong. Yeah, if they decided to redo the Big Lebowski, yeah, I don't think they would. I don't think that they could. Of movies that they could not remake just because they would not go over well. The political correctness climate is different. How big is this painting? It is two feet by three feet. Chris is a giant. No, it's three feet by, um, sorry, yeah, it's two feet by three feet. It's pretty big. I mean, I'm, I'm like five, six, so this painting is like half of my height. But <laughs> the nine volt pump. I would like to paint something that's six foot by six foot, like a six foot square painting. 
Um, I used to have a cool idea for it, and I don't know if I want to do it anymore. But I still want to paint something that big. I like big paintings. I like to do big paintings. brother-in-law his paintings um his painting is two foot by four foot so his painting is a foot longer than this and it's also vert it's a horizontal orientation that's at my brother-in-law's house i finished that ages ago i think i did that in like 2000 finished that in 2018 2019 gave it back to him already he wanted me to paint a door earlier this week. I had to tell him that I was full up. And if he really wanted something, he could probably find it on Amazon and then he could change it out whenever he wanted. I don't want to drive all the way down to his house. He lives in the middle of nowhere. Literally takes like half an hour to get to a gas station from his house. You always do your version of Jackson Pollock painting. <laughs> Um, I don't really like super abstract stuff like, uh, Pollock. I, I like, I like to know what the things are. I mean, even if they're somewhat abstract, like Picasso or something like that, that's fine. But, yeah, when, when you start getting into complete abstractness where the color is the driving factor, um, you kind of lose my interest. There, there is a place for it in society. I'm not saying like his paintings are bad or anything like that. It's just not, not something that I would do. Although I did paint a set once in splatter paint. I believe it was Hotel California. Is that, no. Is that what the name of the play was? It was Hotel something. Hotel California is the name of the song. <clears throat> California Sweets, that's what it was. Alright, I've got this last, this last brick. Then I guess we can just like chat for a little bit if you guys want. Red champagne on ice. I should do it. Hang on. <laughs> Dude, do you live half? Okay, my brother in law again lives half an hour away from a gas station. If he runs out of gas for some reason, driving. I would not be able to walk to his gas station. It just boggles my mind. He lives as far away as he can, but still like technically within civilization. It just, it's just entertaining. Okay, I have to brain in here. Like, I have to think about what's happening in here. Like, this should be black. Because the light's coming from this side. So all the shadows are going that way. This will probably be okay to paint. I'll probably paint this. Do this loosely.
except for here because that's going to be covered by the snake. Oh! Pardon me. Wow. Something like that. I think that's what I can do. It looks better than it did when I started. Actually, it looks pretty good on camera. That looks really good on camera. I'm quite pleased with myself. Yeah, I know, I like to walk, but like walking to a gas station if there's an emergency and then having to walk back is totally different than just going for like a, you know, a nine mile walk or a 15 mile walk or a 12 mile walk. Like totally different. Nobody flies to Missouri. All planes just fly over and then they shake their heads and say, bless your hearts. You know, I, I kinda, I agree with you, Mr. Fox guy. Um, it's, it does seem like nobody thinks that anything cool is in Missouri. You can check it out anytime you like. I mean, I've flown to Missouri, but then I like changed a plane and left. And I don't even remember why there was a change over there. Did you know that Hotel California has a line that's a dig? I would not be surprised. Definitely would not be surprised. Let's put all this over here. So I'm not going to work on this for a couple of days, I think. Let's have so much stuff right here. Can I still read the chat if I sit back here? That's exactly why you flew to Missouri for fireworks. There you go. There you go. You can have fireworks. That's a good line too. I I like the song. Oh, this is the reference photo for the skull, by the way. Cause I needed to make sure I put it at the right angle. I'm thinking it, I'm, I'm kind of excited for this. Mr. Fox guy is awesome. But so are you, Cherry. Don't forget that. <laughs> You're tired of kids. <laughs> One of these nights. There are so many songs out there that I appreciate that I will never remember the name of. That's, that's basically how my life operates. I'm like, ooh, that's a cool song. And then I totally forget it exists until it plays again. So Mr. Fox Guy in Missouri have awesome fireworks. That's good to know. If I feel the need to have awesome fireworks, I will have to go to Missouri. I don't know. I did not go to Missouri for fireworks. I went to Missouri to get on a different plane. Or was it a train? I don't remember. I was like a little kid. I'm not a little kid, like teenager, young teenager. The only state that I haven't really been to is like the northern ones, like Maine and Vermont and New Hampshire. I haven't been to those and I haven't been to Hawaii. <laughs> Flyover state forever. <laughs> oh, poor Mr. Fox guy. <laughs> oh, hey, the chat's working. That's exciting. I don't know why my awesome people aren't showing up. That's crazy. Oh, and the chat's like not even in the chat box. Wow. I'll have to fix that. <laughs> Missouri. Yes, we're actually a state. I think there are states that are 
less well known. Like, if I'm naming the states, I remember Missouri. But there are states that I don't remember. And, like, I can't even give you an example right now because I don't remember them. I don't know the capital of Missouri, though. That's exciting! And coming from Cherry Round, who is a fireworks connoisseur, having, having like, your fireworks given top ratings is good. It's, mwah, you know, great. Aww, got to meet the whole family. That's exciting. Well, hopefully in June, in June I'll be able to give you guys some, hopefully, fingers crossed, things go well, that I'll be able to give you guys some exciting news. Um, it'll be different, it'll be interesting, but it's one of those things that takes a long time to set up, so I don't know if, if, if how, like, things, things are in, in the workings. Speaking of the wifey, she should be home soon. Yeah, mine should be home soon, too. Oh, he said he had to stay late because they're doing some new network stuff or something, so. That kind of sucks. Hey, Tortuga! News, oh, yeah, it is not news... N Hi, Tortuga, yeah. It's not news related to the book. Um, but, in news related to the adventures of Sir Lemon, um... Tomorrow we should have one of our final edits and then I have to put everything into the um, publishing software and if you guys want to proofread it before it gets sent to the publishers you guys can send me a message and I will send it to you. I am so excited that the book will be soon. Have a good night, Mr. Fox Guy. Thanks for stopping by. This is what I painted today, by the way. It's quite large. The skull is larger than my head. And I have meat on my head. So the adventures of Sir Lemon should be kicking off soon. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. We're still, we're still not 100% sure on how to get stuff done. I have to do a little video and I gotta talk to my spouse for that because he knows how to make effective videos and stuff. But there's, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I just threw some garbage onto my palette. Shame on me. Um. I don't really have anything else, guys. I did more than I thought I was going to accomplish today with significantly less paint than I thought I was going to need to do it. Uh, I really appreciate you guys stopping by and hanging out with me. Come watch tomorrow, and we'll get back to the digital art for the little vampire charms that are going to make, like, a little heart. We're going to get those knocked out tomorrow, fingers crossed, hopefully. And... Um, that's all I've got. I'm going to go eat some food because I am hungry and I didn't eat a big lunch. Oh, I need my phone. This is actually really handy to have on my phone. I can hit a button and things will, things will change. And I forgot to record this and I was going to record it. Dang it. Now I have to download it. So thanks for hanging out guys. Uh, I really appreciate everybody for stopping by. Tortuga for being my, um, Thank you for Tortuga for being the author on the adventures of Sir Levin and working with me. And thank you, Cherry, for being such an awesome supporter. And Mr. Fox Guy for showing the amazing movies. And anybody that may be out there lurking, thank you very much. Have a good night and um, have a good dinner. Bye.